Okay, guys, it's the next day. Everything has set up really well. I kind of looked over the tile. I see no lippage problems anywhere. My lines lined up really great, so I'm very happy with the way that turned out. Uh, of course, we've already done the shower floor, so we're going to go ahead and start putting up the tile around the shower. Now, when I put my ram board down, I like to get it real close to the edge, but not all the way. So it'll give the tape something to grab a hold of. Because if I put it all the way to the edge, there's nothing really for the tape to grab. Okay guys, we're kind of at the layout stage and I'm going to tell you it's probably the most important part. One of the things I like to use is I use one of the construction calculators. It helps an awful lot to try to figure everything out. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go measure my actual tiling surface, which is going to be from this wall to the very edge right here, here to the edge over there, and then the same thing on the other side. And the other side should mirror this side. So you're going to get that measurement from floor to ceiling. So what you'll do though is you'll take those measurements, and my measurements are like 93 and 5 eighths all the way to the top. So that means that my first row, I want to make sure that I have enough. If I have to, I cut some down so that I have extra at the top so that I can cut that a little bigger if I need to to cover any gaps. So what you do after you get all those measurements, your width and your height, since you will come back and you will measure your tile. I am 17 and 3 quarter by 17 and 3 quarter. I will use my calculator and I will figure out how many of these tiles it will take me to get to the top and how many tiles to the sides. The sides, I generally like to lay them out and I'll show you here in a second what I did with the back. But the top, I can do it by math real quick. I can lay it out on the floor. If you need to you also need to take into consideration your grouting uh, area which mine is going to be one eighth of an inch so you will multiply that times the amount of tile that you have and you'll start with one at the bottom so i'm looking at three quarters of an inch in grout lines and i've got 5.4 tiles so that gives me a little over half to work with at the top which is perfect if i start pretty much with a full tile so all that being said we're going to come back and we're going to go ahead and put our ledger in and i'm going to put that ledger these are 17 f i'm probably going to put it around 15 inches that way it gives me a couple of inches to kind of cut and work with to make sure that everything is nice and pretty so we're going to go ahead and cut our ledgers real quick get those mounted i just want to find my 15 inch mark where i'm going to start and what i'll do i'm going to take a mark from here see where that is it's going to be about right there. And then I'll take one over here in case this side's setting a lot different. Let's just kind of see where those two marks are coming out at. A lot of times it's easier to go from the top of your marks. Uh, that's right there. So we are definitely tipping down a little. So we're going to go by this one. All right, so I like to use the 24 inch DeWalt level for this. Now this one is screwed in, but I can still move it. You can see my bubble right here. And honestly, that is pretty dang perfect right there. Just like that. 
And I should have one more I can put in right here. There we go. Double check it. And that is perfect. And now we will do the other side. So guys, if you haven't done this before, it's very easy from this point because you know the one that you just installed is totally level. You are going to take the other one, the long one, and you're going to start from that corner because you know it's already level. There we go. Good and level. Now we are ready to start tiling. Okay guys, I'm fixing to go ahead and mix up the mortar. Now the mortar I'm using, because these are large format tiles, is going to be the VersaBond LFT lift, and these are for large format tiles. Make sure you're getting the right mortar. So we're only going to mix up about a half a bag. So I've already got my water pre-measured for half a bag, six quarts, five and a half to six quarts for a full bag. So I'm going to go about two and a half to three quarts for the half bag. So what I do is I use the measuring cups like these to go ahead and get my water kind of measured. I'm going to pour in part of it. It always seems to work better if I pour part of it in so it doesn't stick to the bottom. I've already pre-cut the bag on one end and I'm going to pour some in. You don't want to breathe this but the wind is blowing away from me right now so I'm in pretty good shape. So I'm going to get about that much right there. Save the rest of this. So always keep an extra bucket of water here full so that when you get through mixing, you can put your mixer in there. It saves you a bunch of time so you can get in and get started. Get it about like that. And let's put some more water. I'm going to go ahead and turn my speed down just a little till I get it going. Now you want to pay attention to the edges because the edges is where it cakes up. Now I found if you lift your mixture out with it spinning, it'll spin it out of the center and get all the dried out of there. Like that. Then you can keep going. Trying to speed up just a little and you mix generally for about five minutes and then we're going to let it sit for five. All right, we're going to let it sit for about five minutes, let the additives in it take effect, and we'll do one last blend. All right, guys, we did the final mix. I'm going to use a quarter inch trowel on this one. You could go up to a half as big as these tiles are. This is what your mud looks like kind of almost a little bit of runny peanut butter. So what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll start it like so. And I use the flat part to burn it, what they call burning in. And we are going to what they call butter our tiles which means I'm going to put some mortar on the back of the tile. You make sure you get good coverage that way. All right, about like that. And then I'm going to take my trowel, flip it over, and now we're going to cut our grooves. Just like that. Just like that. And just like that. And a little lighter right through there, so I'll leave that a little thicker. Now, the trick here is do not i've seen guys go in circles don't do that because these lines are meant to let the air escape as you push the tile in so you're going to want to make sure you don't do that these are good porcelain tiles by the way you see the porcelain here and they have these little grooved areas to help grab i do like that here's here like this and then i will go back and clean the edge up all the way around. Now I am going to butt pretty close to the edge here because I'm going to take the other one and kind of go over it and have a grout line there. So I'm going to get it very snug. We're going to go ahead and do leveling. I'm going to do clip method here and I'm going to use probably the spinners on the back wall. So you'll get to see both. 
just like that. So now that we have that, we're going to put our wedges in. You're basically going to put it in like this. I get them started as much as I can by hand. Now, if we don't use wedges, you end up with problems like this with the lippage. You can put extra mortar down and try to level it by hand, use a flat edge. It just generally, in my experience, does not work very well. All right, so once you get it in, you're going to have a tool, and this tool is adjustable. You can move this thing up and down. This one has a screw, so you can do remove the screw, and it has little holes, and you can put it where you want. Some of them have a little quick-release lever. I have one like that as well. So now, this is my lowest spot. So what I'm going to try to do is get everything from the edges first. You just keep pushing and get it like that till it's level. That one's nice. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one. That's good. So now we're gonna start working on this one. And I'll do a little of each of these. Yeah, and I think we're gonna to have to tighten that just a little more. We're just going to drop it back one and see if that gives me the leverage because I've got to get this pulled out just a little more than what it is. Let's try that now. And that's what happens sometimes you break them. guys so it looks pretty good other than this one little spot it just sets in just a little i use my grouting tool which i usually will pre-clean like this and kind of get everything cleaned out ahead of time but i'll use that usually to try to see if i can pull it a little but check all your lines ahead of time here this will save you a lot of time later
All right, so here's your little tip that may help, especially if you're dealing with big tiles like this that are expensive and you're having to cut a big hole. What I did is took a piece of sheetrock and cut it out to the same size as my tile, measured and made my cut. So then I could place it in with spacers and all and make sure that that is going to fit. And it looks like that is going to be pretty much exactly perfect. I'm using one of the big spider carbide bits to cut through this. And one of the tricks is to put a little bit of water on it so that it doesn't powder up as much. Now try to find your center point and you're going to start slowly. It's kind of easier said than done with this. Alright guys, we are to the point of cutting the tile around the shower valve. Now I have a couple of little tricks that I like to do when it comes to this. The first thing is if you have small tile and you're going around it, that's not too hard. You can use a grinder or something like that to cut the openings. But if it is a large tile like this size and you're putting it in, you're going to have to use something like a good hole saw like this one and it has got a diamond plating around it so it cuts very well so all you're going to do is take your piece of drywall put it in place just like it's a piece of tile and you have this little knob that sticks out on your valve and it's pretty strong so you don't have to worry too much about that breaking just take it kind of get it lined up and do a little pop when it pops it's going to leave a little indent in the actual piece of drywall take your cutout bit and you're going to take it and you're going to line the little tip up with the mark that you made right here and then you can actually cut that out on the drywall now so now you'll have the perfect circle on the drywall looking like the tile take this and put it on top of the tile that you want to put in here in the correct orientation make your mark now you can cut the tile out and it'll be perfect every time and you don't waste tile all right, so guys, when you put these in, you're going to have, if it's a Delta multi-choice valve, you're going to have two little screw spots in the very back. You just want to make sure that your opening is large enough to hit those two screws. And what I used here was about a three and a half inch hole saw. So if you do that, it'll work every time. You don't want this opening so big that your scushion plate barely covers that scushion plate needs to make a good watertight seal so we're ready now to go ahead and cut the tile okay guys so i've got my tile set up here i have my little template that i've made from sheetrock and i'm going to put it right over me right over my tile the most important corners i know this is my orientation because of the mark my tile needs to be oriented on my drywall piece that I used as a template on these two corners much more than these because that way my hole will be in the exact spot that I want it to be. So I make sure this whole line and this line are perfect. Once I get that ready, I'm going to wet, wet that down real good and I'm just going to use this as the guide to start. So I get this down right where it needs to be here and I start turning. All right, we've got our mark. So you can see this right here. Now what we have to do, we're gonna pull that out in a second, but I wanna make sure I cut a good groove so that it'll have a guide. So you go just a little further and go ahead and keep wetting. Maybe just a tad more before we take the center out, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, that's pretty good. It's grooved. So now we're going to take our center guide out, 
and I will move it like so. You have a little set screw right here. Use an Allen key. Put it in. Get it started here. And you will counterclockwise just like that. Thing likes to stick. There you go. And generally once I get it loose, I can go the long direction, turn it. See if that's a little warm. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so we're going to set that aside. Now the center guide is out. We don't need that any longer, so we don't need to fight that. And we are going to... There we go. Wet it again. Remember, keep it wet. That'll keep it cool. And we just start cutting. So now we're going to take it in and try to fit it and see how well that fits. Okay guys, I've got it cut. I noticed that I did do a little bit of a chip here on the side when it was cutting. I might have cranked and turned a little bit to the side, but I don't think that's going to matter. And I've got my scussion plate so we can try it and see. But you're going to take it, put it into place, and that is perfect. Both of my screws are in the right place. This is your scussion plate here. So the way this one works, you can see the screw holes here now. Yeah, see it's going to cover that, not even going to be an issue. And I'll have no leak problems at all here. So that's going to be fantastic. got the first couple of pieces cut now the back the side pieces I'm going to do fairly snug top and bottom but I have left my eighth of an inch in the back in here that I can mortar in so that your next piece will come on here the same way same size and it'll leave just enough space to get it lined and mortared and this is the piece this is the piece that is going to be tilted slightly so when I put this piece in I'm going to have a slight tilt, just like that. It'll be off of that back this way just a little. So you'll have a grout line here, grout line here, grout line here. The only thing I'm not going to be grouting is the very bottom of this one in here because my grout line is going to cover it right here. So it'll look really nice. I'm going to get all those in place and then I can cut my river rock to go right inside of here. And I'll do the same thing inside of this little niche here. But once I have that, then it'll be easier to kind of figure exactly what size this tile needs to be so that they will come up here even, have a grout line here, which is going to kind of cover those edge. The only edge I'm going to see is this slight brown, which is going to face up here. And I don't think that's going to be enough to matter because it's going to kind of match the tones of my river rock. Otherwise, I would put in my Schluter. All right, so let's go cut the next one. Okay, guys, the sides are cut for the niche, but it's very important that my next tiles cover these. So you're, I'm going to go ahead and grout these in, get them ready, so that I know exactly where it's going to be because I want very clean, crisp edges. I've already put some grout on. Make sure that you set your lines. I back buttered my tile, and I want to show you this. This is one mistake you could end up making. You try to go long ways, and you have these going sideways. So you'll take your trowel and make sure you're facing the right way. Just like that. And then we're going to clean up the edges, just like before on the big tile. Set that aside for a second. 
Now I want to try to clean up some of this around here. I don't want a whole bunch gobbed up on my sides. So we do it about like that right there. Clean it up. And we're going to now install it. Now remember the side ones I'm going to have set pretty much flush. But I want to set my eighth inch space. So now I should end up with a good space in between my other tiles right there. And now we're going to put this one into play. And make sure you push nice and tight. You should see a little oozing out, hopefully. That means that you got it in there good. And it's not going anywhere. Alright. Now I want to try to get this thing where it's set. Pretty much like my other one. Back butter. Clean up my edges. That way. Work this one into place. Now we're going to measure and put our bottoms in. That way once I have those I can go on with the next tile because I'll know pretty much where my tile needs to overlap. So we are going to do that next. Alright guys, so it's cut, ready to go in. I've left a little bit of a gap about the eighth inch on each side, at the back and on the front. So we're going to go ahead and put on our mortar. Get that in. You get a good even amount. Now this one you may want to set just a little bit higher towards the back because you're going to want to break that bubble per se. And tilt this just a little. So building it up a little bit. Make sure I've got a good bed here. Back butter again. And let's see if we can get this in. And this is where you'll use a little level just to kind of make sure that you are leaning, which we are. We are leaning actually really well. You don't want it so much that your stuff falls off the shelf. But you want to make sure that you are leaning towards the outside. Just make sure she's nice and clean. I'm going to check it one more time. Make sure I didn't push down. And I do like this level because it has a reader on the top. So I can look through the top of the eye and see where I, where I am. And we are definitely tilted. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Good tilt, good tilt, good tilt. So what I'm looking for, just so you know, this is your level. They call it breaking the bubble when your bubble just barely passes this front line. That's about a quarter inch drop, which is perfect. Everything will still set up here, but if water collects, water is going to run out. So that's what you're looking for around here. You don't want water setting up and causing you a problem. So now this is ready to go. I don't want to put any pressure on this right now. We can go ahead and start cutting the sides until we get up to this one. Because I'm going to have to put a wood block or something in to hold the top in. Because the top, sometimes it'll stick, but a lot of times it'll start trying to fall. And I do not want it falling. Just like that. So my first one I'm going to put will be this one here because it will actually uh, be able to set that and then the other one will fall into place with the grout line. Ok, 
Okay, so once you get these kind of set where you want it, and like I said, it's a little trickier trying to get it just the way I want it to look. You'll go ahead and set some of your levelers in. Now what I'll do is I'll twist these a little on each one. A little at a time. Now these in the bottom have already set up. So those are pretty much where they are. But I'm trying to set the new ones to the same. So I'm going to set like this one, since it's already set up down here, set this one first and then line these. You can see it's kind of pushing it in. Right there it is, it's just about there. It's really good. And even these, if you do them too much, they will snap because they're made to be able to break away. Now I want to get this over, I want that flush. So this is where I'm going to use a couple of my little eighth inch spacers on the side. Make sure I get that just right. Good. I like that right there. I'm going to get the next ones in. Okay guys, I'm ready to try to cut the next piece that's going to go over this. I went ahead and put my tops in so that I can get the correct measurement to have my tile come down and cover this edge. You can take pieces of your old tile that you've cut off and cut them as little wedges to hold up. It definitely uh, works pretty well. I just pulled off the ledgers everything is set up good now I'm gonna go back with every one of the little holes and seal it with more of the weedy sealant that should do it there's one two three four oh. just like that there and then what I just use is a little wood wedge help smooth it out so I don't have to go clean up a bunch of tools after just like that there there we go that is on and now all we're going to do is start on the top let that set up so we can go ahead and cut the bottom and put the bottom ones on
Okay guys, we're going to go ahead and cut a tile here real quick just to kind of give you an idea of what how I've been cutting the tiles for in there. These are 18 inch wide tiles and I'm using a regular uh, tile saw made by Rigid, a wet saw that has a tray underneath. And the way this works is they're permanently attached, which makes it safer while you're cutting. It doesn't have kick back and things like that. So you can get a little closer to the blade if you have to. I'd still be very cautious doing that. But that being said, the tray slides. Let me unlock this and show you the problem. When you have a wide format and you slide through here, let's say you're cutting this section off, you're going to hit the arm. So you're going to have to be a little creative. In this particular tile, I'm cutting a little small notch. So if I'm over here and I'm cutting just a section off here, and this is a wide tile, you can see how when I slide it forward, it's going to hit. I'm not going to be able to go any further. So I'm going to have to turn this around and let it hang over and hold it as I'm sliding, which is what I'm about to have to do. On this particular tile, I'm just cutting off a little bit at the very top to make a perfect fit where I'm putting it. So I can't cut it from this way. It's going to hit. So that means I'm going to have to hold it out here. Just like this. And what I do, you do have right on your fence, you do have little markings here. Make sure that you're seeing that. So on your fence right here you have little markings and you can a lot of times use those I tend to just make my mark line it up with my blade and then hold it tight against this fence and see this is hanging over I've just got to make sure I hold it as I slide make sure that you have a good blade I would recommend wearing safety glasses even though it has a shroud and it's going to throw most of the stuff down in the water it's just a good safety precaution do not get too close to the blade if you have to get close to the blade, you're going to use a cheater stick or something to kind of hold the piece. Try to be very, very cautious that you don't get yourself, you know, caught. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cut this so you can see how it works. And also, when you turn it on, make sure that your hose isn't pinched and that you're actually getting water. If you don't get water, you'll run your blade and run your tile really quickly. All right, one last check. That looks actually just a little right there all right let's go ahead and let's cut there we go and that did perfect and cut off all my little pieces nice straight cut so let's go in and let's get this on the wall guys now it's, it's time to go ahead and cut out for the shower spout what I do is I will put one of my spacers on the side one down at the bottom and then I'm going to pull a measurement and I get it all the way from right at the edge all the way to the end here like that is going to be 10 and one half so I'm going to write the 10 and one half down I would just keep a piece of cardboard like this so we have 10 and 1 half, and that's going to be the upward. And what I do is I do a little circle, so I know it'll be at the bottom of my pipe. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's go ahead and pull it from there. Put it on the pipe, and measure over. 
and I am actually four and seven eighths. So I'll do the same thing, write four seven eighths and have the little circle that way. So then I'll go out with my tile and we're going to find that mark. And I'm going to use a different cutter. I'm going to show you the cutter we're going to use on this one. Okay, guys, so the first line of business is going to be finding our spots. So from the side, four and seven eighths, and it's going to be about ten and a half up. So it's going to be right in here, four and seven eighths, right here. And then we are going to be looking at ten and a half. So right here is our bottom. So basically I'm looking for my two intersecting points. Right here and right here. So that means our saw place needs to be right right about there so put it back on there there make my lines just like that now we're going to use this new handy dandy little device here that we will lock in That's pretty good and tight right there. That's good. We'll tighten it up. putting water and there you go looks really nice let's go give it a try Okay, guys, got the hole cut. Everything is set up and ready to go. See, it's going to go like that right there. Let's see how she goes. There we go. Good fit. You don't want a lot of mortar around it. This is temporary. The other arm's going to be coming in. I wanted everything nice and tight right here. The scushion plate's going to cover this, but you don't want to leave a lot of space. That way you don't have to worry too much about silicone right there. You can put a little dab around it if you need to, but you want it to hold. So that is looking very good. Put in our little yellow caps. Line everything up and get the next one here. And then we have three little pieces left and I've got four at the bottom.
guys battery went out so I apologize didn't get to show you some of this but I've already started the top one as far as putting my river rock in the back of my niche I go ahead and put it on the back it puts a lot of excess but I'll let this set up a little bit and then I'll come back and clean that out just don't let it dry that way you'll never get it out so get it kind of where you want it let it start setting up a little bit and then make sure it's nice and tight you don't have to worry too much about the lines going in any really one direction here because this is river rock and it's going to come out in all direct got this one cut and ready i go ahead and put it on the back as well now a lot of guys won't do that but it actually helps let's see figure out which direction i want this one i think it's this way slightly bigger in one area that's it and i work it in now you can go ahead with your little grout tool and clean some of the excess out now if you want. A lot of times it's just easier to do it, give it about an hour or so to start kind of setting up just a little. Alright guys, you'll also probably want to put some spacers at the bottom and make sure that it's pushed up where you want it. the tiles in I will come back and let it set up for about 24 hours come back and I'm going to knock all of these out get them ready clean up anything that might be in the seams and then we'll get ready to put our grout in and I'm going to use a heavy-duty quick setting grout that already has the sealer built into it that stuff you have to be moving quick because it sets up really fast and it'll stain and it's hard to get off if you don't you generally work in small sections but we'll go over that when we get to the grout sections. So tomorrow morning, we will go ahead and start cleaning up and get ready to grout.